Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Staying safe. Take care of yourself. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for coming by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm working with gradient masks. And this video is really about how I, I think in gradients, for lack of a better word. And so um, gradient masks, because they allow you to specify like a straight line in a photo and mask above it or below it, they're particularly good at certain kinds of photos. That's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. Let me show you the shot I'm working on. Here we go. This is a, a shot from La Jolla, California. Kind of a long exposure at sunset. And the reason I think in gradients is because here you have a very straight, very defined line that's a horizon. And you know, basically you have a clear uh, above the fold and a clear below the fold. And to me, they're two separate kind of things that I want to do. I want to work on the top with color and, and you know light and things like that. On the bottom, too dark, needs a little pop of color, needs some other things. And so the gradient allows you to divide the photo really easily and really well and go separate them. Let me show you my finished photo. There it is. I also, um, I did crop it, but I also had to do some uh, lens distortion. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but again, there's the after, before and after. I'm going to hit reset and walk you through this edit. Okay, here we go, uh, base photo, and oddly enough, the first thing I did here, and this is a raw file on this base layer, I just added uh, AI accent of about 21, just to brighten it a little bit, just to give me a little bit better visibility into the bottom of the photo. I could have done that with some other things, but what I like to do on my base layer, when I know I'm gonna be adding additional layers, which I am in this video, um, what I like to do is basically do some very simple and straightforward uh, base edits to kind of brighten the image, get the light kind of balanced. So I went from there to there with the AI accent. I could have used a light tool, but chose not to. So this is where I go to the layers panel, and now I'm like, okay, I've got my base photo. I wanna go work on the top separate from the bottom, and then work on the bottom separate from the top. In fact, I think I'm gonna actually work on the bottom first. So I'm gonna say add new adjustment layer. I'm gonna say mask and gradient mask. And it says click and drag to draw a gradient. So I'm gonna, uh, whoops, I'm moving a little too fast there. The gradient mask is gonna go something about like this. Um, and so something about like that. That allows me to mask into the bottom of the photo. And if you look at it, you can see the stuff that's in red is where all my edits are gonna apply. So I'm doing this at the layer level. So it's a layer mask. So I'm gonna say done. I'm gonna pop over here to the various tools and filters and start making some enhancements to the bottom of the image. Okay, first thing is to go into the light tool and I'm gonna bump up the, uh, the temperature a little bit and the tint just a, a fraction as well. Smart contrast is gonna get a little bit of a bump as well. That's going to about 35 and shadows are gonna come up because it is too dark down there. Um, and we're gonna work on that here in a minute, but I uh, just wanted to do a little bit of base stuff. Again, I'm working on the bottom of the photo, so that's below the horizon. Now I'm going to AI Accent, and I'm giving that a 25, and that really popped the brightness in the bottom half of the photo. So there's the before, and you can see quite a bit darker in the after. Okay, now I'm gonna use AI Structure, and again, bottom of the photos. I just wanna give those rocks a little bit of a pop, so maybe something about like 25, I don't want to overdo it. Again, I'm working on the bottom of the photo, but just want to crunch up those rocks a little bit. And now I'm going to go into the color. I want to give this a little bit of vibrance, which for me, it kind of pops some of the non-dominant colors, gives them a little bit of a kick, which I like. But I want to be careful here with the oranges. So I'm going to go into settings, and I'm going to take the saturation of the oranges down a little bit. I don't want to overdo the orange look in those rocks because they are picking up a bit of orange. But the blue, I do want to increase the saturation of. So if I could grab that, there we go. I'm popping that quite a bit. Something about like 65 or 70. Again, just working on the bottom half of the photo. So color, I don't know how well you can tell, but there's the before, a little bit drabber, that sort of thing. And the after, um, I can tell the orange has come down a little bit. I don't want to oversell it. I don't want to oversaturate. Um, I think things like that natural stuff that already has a bit of color in it, if you saturate it very much, it starts to look kind of cartoonish, kind of HDR-ish, like um, I just want to have better control of the color. So that was why I brought that down. Now I'm going to pop over to the next tab. I'm going to get mystical and do about a 20, 24, 25, something like that. And then I'm going to go to the portrait tab, get Orton and give that like a 10 or 12. And again, all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of interest, a little bit of shadow there, 
and now I'm on to the Pro tab. And in Pro tab, all I'm really doing is color enhancer, and I'm gonna give the brilliance about a 15 or 16, something like that, and give it a little bit of warmth as well. Um, and again, just trying to pop that color in, since I warmed it up and gave it some brilliance, that's another reason I desaturated the orange earlier because if I had not, this orange would really be over the top. And as it is, it's actually kind of orange. So I might come back over here and take that orange down a little bit further. I don't wanna overdo it, like I said, but let me show you what this layer has done. Again, just the bottom of the photo, you can tell this uh, little masking representation here, uh, white reveals and black conceals. So the things I'm doing are revealed where it's white, which is the bottom of the photo, and it's concealed where it's black, which is the top of the photo. So if I turn this off and you look at the bottom of the photo, you can see that's what it was like before. Not quite as warm, not quite as vibrant, kind of darker, not as much crunch in the rocks, things like that. Now a bit more visible, a bit more colorful. I think it looks pretty sweet. I'm now going to add another additional layer. This time, this adjustment layer is going to be for the top of the image. Now, I could have, if I was smart and thought ahead, could have copied the mask from down there and paint, painted it or pasted it here to the top, but I'll just go drag a new gradient mask. And this time I'm gonna start from the top and pull this way and just kind of try to get that straight-ish. Doesn't have to be exact, something about like that. And now my mask, let me just show that to you. There we go. Again, white reveals, black conceals. So if you look over here, it's the opposite. White's at the top now and black's at the bottom. And because I've got the masking eyeball clicked, you can see the red area is where my edits are gonna go. So I can say done, and I can pop over here and use the tools that I want to adjust the top of the image. So first thing, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna give it a little bit of warmth and a little bit of tint as well. Um, I wanna bring up some of the colors. It was sunset, but as you can see, the sunset didn't really pop and that happens. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is use AI structure and I love to use AI structure negative to soften things up. So I'm gonna go kind of soft here. I'm like a negative 40 something and I'm gonna boost it as well. All I'm doing is smoothing out those skies. It was a long exposure, but I'm making it a little bit softer and a little bit dreamier by doing this negative structure. Now saturation and vibrance are both gonna get like a 25 or so. And that's me just wanting to pop the color because I like popping color. Um, now I just, the thing is, when you do gradients like this, you gotta keep in mind, you want the top and the bottom to kind of go together. I feel like they kind of go together, um, but I'm gonna do a little bit more here, and that's a golden hour, and that's like a 22 or something. Um, and that's just kind of giving a little bit of warmer kick to that sky. And this is kind of a subtle edit. I, I mean, I feel like it's subtle, maybe it's not subtle to you, but that's the edit, that's the before and after. Let me show you. Before, a bit more blue, a bit more drab, that kind of thing, and after, a little bit more color, and if you do the sliding window here, you can see it's uh, pretty easy to tell what's happened to the photo. I like the look of it. I wanted to go for a little bit more of that twilighty kind of post-sunset. I mean, it was post-sunset. You can see the sun is gone, but the clouds kind of obscured a lot of it. There wasn't a lot of color. I wanted to bring some of that back, but not really overdo it, and that's what I ended up with. Now, I do see a couple of spots. I'll go take those out quick and easy with the eraser tool, which is over here on Canvas Tools, and click Erase. I'm gonna go do that on my own time, but that's my workflow. And really what I wanted to talk about here was just thinking in gradients, because when you have a photo that has a very flat defined horizon with a very specific top and bottom, keep in mind, it could also be tilted. So you could mask it if it's slanted like diagonally across the photo for some reason, you could mask you know that way and this way separately. So this happens to be perfectly flat. So there's a perfect straight horizon but even if it's tilted, you can still use the gradient in the same manner. My point was, I think in gradients when I have photos like this, because it's very specific to me, and I think I need to do certain things to the bottom that I'm not gonna do to the top, and vice versa. I need to do specific certain things to the top that I won't do to the bottom. Gradient masking is perfect for that. That's how and why I think in gradients. Hope it gives you some ideas for your own photos. Thanks for stopping by, my friends. Hope you're having a great day. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon, and adios.